Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome. It is so good to have you here today. We're looking forward to our time when we can sing some songs of worship to God and spend some time learning together. And uh, J.R. Dudek, one of our global partners, is here today. We're going to visit with him a little bit. So thank you so much for coming and worshiping with us today. For those of you at home, uh, welcome. It's great to have you uh, join us as well today. I hope if you're here in the worship center and at some point you'll take a moment and fill out one of the welcome cards that are in the seat backs in front of you, or you can find them online or on the app and just let us know that you joined us today. If you have a prayer request, make sure you include that on those welcome cards so that we can pass that on to our prayer team and they can be praying for you this week ahead. Those of you at home, you can do that as well right on the app or on the, the website there. There's a place for you, a digital welcome card. We just encourage you to take a moment and fill that out uh, a, a, as well and just let us know that you've joined us today. Um, in your bulletin and at OC Connect, which is our digital bulletin. There's a lot of information about upcoming events, and I hope you'll take a few minutes and check that out at some point. I do want to mention two things to you. Uh, first, Vacation Bible School is coming up here in a few weeks for us, so it's the week of June 13th through the 16th. This is always a really big deal for us here at Otterbein. We have a couple hundred kids usually come uh, and, and that are a part of that. It takes about 100 volunteers for us to do that. And uh, if, if you uh, have kids kids or neighbor kids that you want to invite to come, you know, I just encourage you to go ahead and get them registered now uh, so that we can be prepared for them. It'll also make that first night so much better and easier for you and your family. So if you want more details about that, make sure you check out the bulletin or OC Connect. The other thing that I want to mention to you is that right now we have a couple of ministries in our church where we have some opportunities for people to serve. One of those areas is in our tech team, which is the team that works back behind on Sunday mornings and they help with the slides, you know, the lyrics for the songs, the lighting, the cameras for our, our feed and our live stream, all of those kinds of things. And uh, we're looking for a few people to join that team. Here's the deal with it, okay? It's usually uh, where you serve once a month, but it's for the whole morning that, so, that once a month. Uh, you know, you usually come in around 7, 7.30 and you're here about 12.30 that day. And uh, we'll train you and help you to learn. If you're someone that uh, likes technology and those kind of things and is interested in working behind the scenes, uh, this is a great opportunity for you. And so if you're interested in learning more about that, uh, you can go on the app and you can go on the website or you can stop out at Connection Point, fill out an online form, or just stop back at the back after the service date, ask to speak to James for a moment. And uh, James is the head of that team and he would be happy to talk with you a little bit more uh, about all of that. The second ministry opportunity is, um, you know, here at our church, Whenever someone passes away and we have funerals or there's memorial services, we provide a meal for them following that service. It's been a great ministry in the life of our church. And... Um Right now, we have some need for some additional people to be available to help us with that. It, it's really as an ad needed kind of thing. You know, it's not anything that we can ever really plan for very far in advance. And so we like what we like to do is have a list of people that we can call on to help us with this. This usually takes place during the weekday daytime hours. And so it's uh, best for people that, you know, are working at home or people that are retired to be able to help us with that. Sometimes it's on weekdays ends, but usually through the week. And uh, so if that is something you would be interested in learning more about, again, you can fill out the form uh, there that's available, the OC serve form on the website, on the app out at Connection Point. There's also an email address in your uh, bulletin or OC Connect today, and you can just send us off an email and we can get back in touch with you and talk with you uh, a little bit more about that. Well, again, so good to have you here. Why don't you stand with me, those of you in the worship center. Let me lead us in a word of prayer, then Caleb and the band is going to lead us in worship today. Father in heaven, you are an amazing God, and you are worthy of our worship, and you are worthy of our praise. You're worthy of what we're about to do here this day. And Lord, we pray that, you know, as we sing songs to you, and as we spend this time studying your word, as we, as we take some time to visit with JR and hearing about what you're doing somewhere else in the world, Lord, I, I just pray that through all of that and so much more, that, God, you would be honored in it all, that you would find pleasure in it. Uh, Lord, we, we want you to know that we love you today, and so all that we do in these next moments, we do for you. At the same time, Lord, we are a needy people, and we need you so much today, and we're all at different places in our journey, and we're all dealing with different circumstances in life right now, and so would you just pour out your spirit on us? and touch us right where we're at. Help all of us to walk out of this service today having a sense that we met with you, Lord, 
that we heard from you today. And so have your way in these moments that are ahead. We commit our time to you now, and we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's remain standing. Let's sing together today. Ed started the wrong song. Oh, come on, man. <laughs> Give it up for Ed, everybody. Woo! <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> All right, let's put our hands together. Come on. Who came ready to worship this morning? Woo! Hallelujah means we're going to raise a joyful shout, so let's do it. I raise. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. And I raise a hallelujah. Louder than the unbelief, I raise, and I raise a hallelujah. My weapon is a melody, and I raise a hallelujah. Cause heaven comes to fight for me, I'm gonna say. In the middle of the storm, louder and louder, you're gonna hear my praises roar. Up from the ashes, hope will arise. Death is defeated, the King is alive. He's alive. And I Hallelujah with everything, with everything inside of me. Yes, we do, Father. And I raise a hallelujah. Cause I will watch the darkness flee. And I raise a hallelujah. In the middle of gonna sing and I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm louder and louder you're gonna hear my praises roar up from the ash hope will arise death is defeating the king is alive sing because you're alive I'm 
you're faithful. Let's sing it one more time. Oh God, my God. Oh, we need you, Lord. My God, I need you now. How I need you now. Oh, rock, oh, rock of ages. I'm standing on your faithfulness. On your faithfulness. Standing on your faithfulness, Lord, it's who you are. You free the captives. You free the captives. And you're freeing hearts right now. Cause you are the same God. You are the same God. You touch the lepers. And I feel your touch right now. changing Lord song to rise to you when temptation comes my way when I cannot stand I fall on you Jesus cause Jesus you're my hope and stay Lord I Thank you for your love, Jesus, your grace that you poured out. 
through freely for us. We are people that need you, God. We need those words this morning. We need you. Draw us closer to you so that you may be glorified in us, God. Same way that you were obedient to your Father and going the cross for our sins. We want to be obedient to listening to your voice and your calling where you lead us to go. Push us this morning, Lord. Challenge us from your word. Have your way in our hearts in this place. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a seat, everyone. Thank you, guys. JR, will you come and join me? You know, one of the privileges we have at our church is to um, partner with people that are serving all over the world. And it's always a real special blessing for us to have people that grew up in our local area and attended Otterbein and, and uh, that we've been able to be a part of their lives and their ministry and their service. And, and J.R. Dudick is one of those young men that, uh, you know, we had this privilege of being able to send out to be a sending church as he goes out and serves the Lord. So J.R., good to have you here with us a little bit today. Now, I recognize that there are probably some people in the room here and those watching online that may not be real familiar with you. You. And uh, so just tell us a little bit, where are you serving and, and what's that area like where you're serving at right now? Yeah, so I uh, live and serve in Peru in a town called Puerto Maldonado. Uh, it's a town of anywhere between 100,000 and 150,000 people. And uh, it's in the Amazon region of the country. So hot and humid pretty much all year long. Yeah. And so um, you're down there in Peru. So tell us, you know, what is the focal point of your ministry down there? I mean, what, what, are you, what are you doing down there? Yeah, so my main focus is working with uh, children and youth, uh, and I do that through a wide variety of ministries. I work with a local church down there with a national pastor, and I help uh, in the children's ministries of the church uh, through teaching Sunday school. Uh, we also have uh, kids' Bible clubs that we do on the weekend in, in two different areas. And then um, I'm also the director of an aftercare school program, um, a Christian library where kids come and they can get help with their homework. And uh, we also get the opportunity to tell them about Jesus and just love on them. And uh, it's just a place for kids to come and be kids and have fun and make friends. Yeah. So, you know, I think when we hear, you know, you do this learning school, this after school program and, and all the things you're doing down there. Um, you know, I, I think for us back here in the States, we sometimes wonder like, uh, how, how open are people in other countries? And so how open are people in Peru to hear about Jesus and for you to talk with them about Jesus? Yeah, so Peru is a Catholic country, so many of the people have been to church before, uh, I'll be at the Catholic church, and they have heard scripture before, um, but they really don't understand what it means to be a follower of Jesus. Huh. And so um, they are open to the gospel, and the parents are very open to having us come and, mm. and teach Bible classes. And uh, even in their school, they have religion class. And so a lot of times the kids will bring their religion homework to the learning center, and then we get to sit there and open the Bible with them and, and mm. help them work through their religion class. Yeah, very cool. So, JR, I know that, you know, you've been working with this national pastor, and that's been a big part of your ministry focus down there. But over the past couple of years, you've also had this vision that God has given you about developing a camp down there. So tell us a little bit about this camp. Yeah, so I've grown up here in Waynesboro, and I spent a lot of time over at Good News Camp here in town, uh, both as a camper, a counselor, junior counselor, teacher, missionary. Um, and I, I love everything about camp, and I know that camps can be a, a neat opportunity to reach kids with the gospel and also for, for kids and youth to be able to make decisions that will change their life. And so uh, talking with the pastors down there and the other missionaries, we decided to um, try to build a Christian camp there in, in Puerto Maldonado because the closest Christian camp is over 10 hours away. So none of the kids there have ever had the opportunity to go to camp. Yeah, and so you've been working on this camp. Tell us a little bit about this piece of property you have and the progress you've been able to make so far with it. Yeah, so in 2019, God opened the door for us to purchase a, a piece of property. It's uh, 27 acres um, just outside of town. And uh, the last two years, we've been working on um, getting the access done to be able to get into camp, building a fence to keep the neighbor's cows out and also to <laughs> secure the, the property. And uh, last year, God gave us the opportunity to dig a well, build a water tower, and also put in the 1,000-square-foot uh, garage that we have there now where we were able to store the tools that we need to be able to take care of the property. Yeah. And uh, currently, we're working on a 3,600-square-foot pavilion 
uh, multi-purpose building uh, yeah. that we're going to be able to use there at the camp as well. And so when do you hope to be able to have kids there? Lord willing, we'd like to be able to start doing some day camp activities out at the camp next year, uh, depending on if we can get the bathrooms and the septic system yeah. and everything in this year. And long-term vision, maybe some overnight camps there as well, that kind of thing? Yeah, long term, we would like to be able to build dorms and have places where people can stay overnight and be able to do week-long camps or weekend retreats, uh, those types of things. Yeah, very exciting, Jay. That's a very exciting opportunity for you down there. Now, I know you've been here, uh, I guess, for a couple months now. Uh, you know, some of you are aware of this, but JR got dengue fever, and then he got COVID on top of that, and uh, he, he needed to come home here for a little while. I guess this is home, you know, Peru's home too, but you've been able to come back here to the States for a little while and get some medical attention for all of that. Uh, so how you doing? I'm doing much better than what I was. Yeah. <laughs> I was able to meet with a bunch of different doctors and try to figure out the different symptoms I was having, and God worked through all that, and I'm um, doing a lot better than what I was. Good. And you're headed back to Peru when? I leave Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday. So uh, we're excited for you, JR. You know, uh, here after the service, uh, JR is going to be out in the lobby, and I want you to feel free to go up and to talk with him. He has some prayer cards there, you know, so you can put somewhere, be a good reminder to you to be praying for him. Uh, you know, here at our church, uh, as his sending church and also a supporting church, uh, when you give to local to global ministries, a part of that giving goes to support JR and his work down in Peru. But I know that there are many in our church who also have come alongside of JR personally and supported him apart from their giving to the church and even above and beyond what they give here to the church. And so if that is something that you would be interested in talking to JR about, you feel free to talk with him about that out there and he can provide more information to you uh, about all that. If you want to partner with him in the development of this Christian camp, uh, please feel free to talk with him about that as well, because I know some others have come alongside and, and to help with that. Uh, JR, how can we pray for you here as you head back? Uh, you know, what, what are some things that we should keep in the forefront of our minds and prayers for you? Yeah, definitely be praying for me on Tuesday and Wednesday as I travel back. Um, it's a long trip, about 18 hours to get back to where I'm serving. So just pray for that to go well and all my luggage to yeah. make it with me. <laughs> and um, also just for me uh, to have wisdom in knowing the best time to slowly work myself back into yeah. ministries and not overwhelming myself uh, as soon as I get back there. So Yeah. Um, one more thing, and then I want to pray for you. I, I failed to mention a little bit earlier. So we're hoping to take a team down. You know, um, we really haven't had a team leave uh, out of our country here uh, since COVID hit. But on August the 13th through the 21st, we're hoping to take a team down to Peru where JR is at and partner with him and come alongside of him down there. JR, tell folks a little bit, uh, you know, what will that team be doing while they're down there with you? Yeah, so in the mornings, uh, we're going to be working out at the camp. Uh, the pavilion should be done by then, um, and we need to pour a concrete floor in the entire pavilion, 3,600 square feet. So that'll be a big project. Um, also need to build some shelves for in the garage to be able to store tools and do that kind of thing. And there's a ton of other projects that uh, we're going to be working there. And then in the afternoon, uh, Lord willing, we're going to be at the learning center. Um, so that way everybody will get a chance to spend time with the kids. They love having visitors and just playing games, playing Uno and Connect Four and all those yep. games. Um, so they'll get a chance to spend time with the kids and just be able to build a relationship with them while they're there. Yeah, and so if that would be of interest to you, to any of you to go down there and serve, uh, make sure you talk to Pastor Dirk. You know, Pastor Dirk heads up our Logo to Global efforts here at the church. And uh, or you can talk to JR a little bit, you know, even when you're out there today and just ask him some specific questions. One thing we would just remind you about is that in Peru, they still have some very strict COVID restrictions. And uh, because of that, there's pre pre-trip testing and post-trip testing for COVID that's a part of all this. They have vaccine requirements that are required to get into their country. And so uh, some of that information is included there in the bulletin today or at OC Connect uh, with this opportunity. But that is certainly something that you'll want to make sure that you talk with Pastor Dirk about to learn a little bit more about what might be required. We know that for some of you that, that won't be a good fit for you right now. But, uh, you know, our hope is to get down with some folks and to be able to come alongside and encourage Jay are and, and to serve down there as well. So make sure you take a moment and check that out. JR, thanks so much for being here today. You know, I, I we are so blessed with so many uh, great partners at our church, Global Partners. 
and uh, they're out there doing a fantastic job. And, uh, you know, I, I just want you to know, though, you know, from our perspective and what we're seeing with JR, uh, his ministry is accomplishing significant fruit. And it is worthy of our prayers and it is worthy of your support. And so I, I just encourage you to you know, keep praying for JR and that God would just bless his ministry, continue to bless it in some incredible ways down there. Let me, let me pray for JR here. Father in heaven, we're so thankful that uh, we have this privilege to come alongside and to be one of JR's partners. God, you've called him to this ministry. Um, he has gone and been faithful to you. And God, you've blessed that ministry down there in so many incredible ways. And we thank you for all of that. God, we're thankful through these past couple of months that he's been able to be back here in the States and get the medical attention that he needed. And we're thankful that you've brought some healing to his body. And we pray that as he prepares now to go back on Tuesday, Lord, would you just uh, prepare the way for all of that? Would you help everything to work out at the airport, all the luggage to get down there, uh, that that would go smoothly. There wouldn't be any problems with that. We pray that you'd help him to get reacclimated back into the ministry and, you know, the weather and all of the things that are part of living down in Peru right now. And uh, Lord, just, just help him uh, to, to continue to experience the fruitfulness of ministry that you've already blessed him with. Thank you again, God, that we could spend these moments with him today. And uh, just have your hand on him now. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, JR. Thanks so much for being with us today. Yeah. Thank you, dude. Well, for the past five weeks at our church, we've been in this series called Jesus Says. And each week what we've been doing is we've been trying to take some time and look at something that Jesus said or something Jesus taught when he was here on the face of this earth and, uh, uh, you know, learn from those things. And one of the things we've talked about throughout this whole series is, you know, when Jesus says something, whenever uh, Jesus taught something, uh, it's worthy of us paying attention to. Uh, you know, anybody who can predict their own death and uh, tell you that he's going to rise from the dead and then pull that off just like he said he would, uh, you should take everything else that he says, uh, you know, you pay attention to it and you should live it out and make it a part of your life. And so that's why over these past few weeks, we've really been digging in to some things that Jesus taught and said that are recorded in the Bible. Well, here's where we're going today. Today, we're going to look at something Jesus said to the Apostle Peter where the Apostle Peter was uh, caught up in what we would consider this incredible of miracles. It was a time whenever Peter walked on the water, at least for a little bit. And uh, this whole, this whole uh, experience, there, there, it's just an amazing thing. And there are some lessons for you and me to learn from some things that uh, Jesus engaged with Peter about as he was doing what is humanly an impossible thing to do. Now, before we get into this scripture, let me just give you a little context. We actually read the first part of the scripture that we're going to reread today two weeks ago when we were talking about, uh, you know, not being afraid. And you might recall if you were here two weeks ago, and if you weren't, I just want to kind of set this all up for you, that right before all of this happens that we're looking at today, Jesus had been out teaching in this large crowd gathered around Jesus. And um, the Bible tells us that the crowd numbered 500 men. In those days, they generally just counted the guys, but it meant that there wives were there, the kids were there, and so there were probably a crowd, 10, 12, maybe 15,000 people. And as nightfall started coming, you know, the disciples are kind of freaking out, like, hey, we don't have food to feed all these people, you know, there's not like delis and diners around here, yeah, we, what are we going to do? And, you know, they wanted Jesus to send them away, and Jesus said, no, we're going to feed them, we're going to feed them. And they're like, we don't have any food for this. And uh, Peter finally says, hey, you know, here's what we found, we got five loaves of bread and two fish, and Jesus said, bring it to me. And the Bible tells us he prayed over it. says, go pass it out. And they passed it out. And what you see at the end of all of this is that everybody got fed. Everybody got fed. And then Jesus, to make his point, hey, guys, go pick up the leftovers. And they go pick up the leftovers. Like, see? See? Here's what happens when you trust me. And, uh, you know, for people that were there that day, it was the most incredible of miracles. It really was. It proved once again to people around them, especially the disciples, this guy really is more than just a human being. He really is God. Well, it's what happens next that we're going to focus on today for a few minutes. Here's what it says. 
So immediately after this, Jesus insisted that his disciples get back into the boat and cross to the other side of the lake while he sent the people home. After sending them home, he went up into the hills by himself to pray. Night fell while he was there alone. And meanwhile, the disciples, they were in trouble far away from land for a strong wind had risen and they were fighting heavy waves. About three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came toward them walking on the water. And when the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified. And in their fear, they cried out, it's a ghost. But Jesus spoke to them at once. Don't be afraid, he said. Take courage. I am here. Now, that's where we stopped last week or two weeks ago when we looked at this scripture. And, and the big point of the day was that, you know, if we find ourselves living in fear, if we find ourselves in moments that we're afraid, that we always need to remember Jesus is here. He's going to walk with us. He, he's going to see us through whatever it is that we're facing in our life. And if you weren't here and you'd like to listen to that message, it's all available on the on the app. It's available on our website. You can go and watch that whole service or you can watch just the message of that day. Well, it's what happens next that we're really going to focus on today. Okay, so here's Jesus. He's walking on the water. They're all freaked out thinking it's a ghost. He reminds them, no, I'm not a ghost. You know, I am here. It's going to be okay. And let's read on to what happens next. Then Peter called out to Jesus, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you walking on the water. Yes, come, Jesus said. So Peter went over the side of the boat and he walked on the water toward Jesus. But when he saw the strong wind and the waves, he was terrified and he began to sink. Save me, Lord, he shouted. And Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him. You have so little faith, Jesus said. Why did you doubt me? Why'd you doubt me? And when they climbed back into the boat, the wind stopped, and then the disciples worshipped him. You really are the Son of God, they exclaimed. Now here's what we're going to consider today. You know, a lot of times when we read this story about Jesus walking on the water, we get focused on and fixated on Peter's failure. The fact that, I, you know, what happened to Peter, man? He started walking and then he messed up and he started sinking. But for today... We're going to look at this at a very different angle than that. Here's what I want us to talk about today and what I find so amazing about this story. Peter walked on water. He, he really did. He walked on the water. He did something that was impossible to do. And it was only possible whenever Jesus invited him to do it. Sometimes I think that you and I allow our doubts, you and I allow our fears to get in the way of us doing some things that God invites us to do, that he leads us to do. And we end up allowing our doubts and our fears to get in the way of us moving forward in our lives. And the result is that we end up getting stuck, that we end up getting stagnant, that we end up robbing ourselves of God's best. And I believe this very day, that one of the things that I hope that we can walk out of this room believing today is that God wants some of us to get out of the boat. That he really does. That he is a God who is able and capable of helping us to experience the impossible. To do impossible things, but also to walk through what might feel like impossible circumstances in our life. Peter walked on the water. What was impossible you and I can still experience some impossible things if we will just get out of the boat. I want to remind us of a few things that to me stand out from this story and um, from other places in the Bible that I hope will challenge you and encourage you at the same time today. Here's the first thing. I just want to remind all of us that nothing is impossible when God is involved that nothing is impossible when God is involved. I want to start here today because I think that, you know, sometimes we kind of lose our perspective about this. I mean, mankind has been able to do some amazing things. I mean, we got people on the moon. We can do things technologically that are just amazing and incredible. We can do things medically that to me are just amazing and incredible. Uh, you know, we, man has figured out how to do a lot of things. I mean, it, it really is a pretty and amazing thing just to see all that humankind has been able to figure out and do. But 
there are still some things that are impossible for man and woman to do, aren't there? And they will always be impossible. There are certain things that we just simply will never be able to pull off. But with God, that's not true of him. God is able to do anything. Just think of this, the God of the universe who by the very command of his voice brought into existence the universe and the world that we live in and the nature that is all around us, that we have a Savior in the Lord Jesus Christ who was able to raise himself from the dead. He was able to raise other people from the dead. He had power to do all of that. He had the ability to ascend into heaven. We know he's coming back again one day. He did miracles while he worked on the earth, walked on the earth. I mean, the truth is there is nothing too big for God and nothing too big for Jesus to pull off. Nothing is impossible for them. And nothing is impossible for us, hang in here with me, when God is involved. Oh, sure, we see our limitations. I mean, the fact is, Peter would have never been able to walk on the water unless Jesus had invited him to do it. There has never been anyone before that time that walked on the water. And to my knowledge, there's never been anybody since that time. You and I certainly haven't walked on the water. What happened there was only possible because God was in it. And you and I, when we're in the midst of the struggles and the difficulties of life, and when you and I are sensing God's nudging to do something, and we have convinced ourselves that's impossible. It's just too big. It's too much. I could never do that. Just remember, we must never lose sight of this. Nothing is impossible with God when God is involved in our lives. Nothing is impossible or too big for God. Now, That leads me to a second thing that's really important for us to keep in mind. So while we can say, okay, so nothing's impossible when God is involved because nothing's impossible for God, it's so important that we don't miss this point. That success in accomplishing what seems impossible is only possible if God has led us and empowered us to do it. Now don't miss what happened here in the story, okay? So... Jesus is walking on the water, right? And, you know, at first they weren't even sure who it was. And then, you know, they started getting, oh, it must be Jesus. Hey, and Peter says, hey, Lord, if it's you, right? If it's you, tell me to come. What I want you to note is this. Peter didn't just see Jesus walking on the water and all of a sudden decide, you know what? I'm going to hop out of the boat. If he can do it, I can do it. If he had done that, I have no doubt he would have sunk. None. Uh, But what he did in experiencing the impossible, he did because Jesus told him it was okay to do it. Remember what he said, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come. And what did Jesus say? Yes, come. It was an invitation. Jesus said, okay, you can do this because I'm here. I'm here to help you. Now, why am I making such a big deal of this? Because I think... That sometimes we who are Christians, here's how we we approach this, okay? We say, well, I believe God can do anything. And so we start saying, you know what? This is what I want to do. And we pray and say, hey, God, this is what I'm going to do. And I I really expect that you're going to bless this. I know you could do anything, God, but we tell God the plan. And then when it doesn't work like we told God that he was supposed to make it work for us, we get a little disillusioned. We get a little ticked off. It's like, God, I thought you could do anything. Why didn't you pull off your end of the deal here? You can do anything. Why didn't you show up? Because you never asked God whether it was the right thing to do in the first place. That's why. Now, to be sure... There are times when we have a sense that God is leading us to do something and we pray and we take a step forward and God kind of, you know, helps us in spite of ourselves. But listen, this is what I want you to see. If you really want to believe that God can do something miraculous and impossible in your life, you need to only do that if he leads you to do it, if he guides you to do it, if he's prompting you to do it. Because that is when you can be sure, just like for Peter when he walked on the water, that there was some success there. That's the only way you can be sure of that success. So don't get ahead of Jesus nudging when it comes to this impossible thing. All right? 
Listen to his voice. Listen to his nudge. And whenever he nudges, that's when you go. One more thing I want to say about this before we go to the next point. You might think, well, is it ever okay for me to pray and ask God to do something really big? Oh, yes. Go ahead and ask. Pray and pray and pray. But when you pray, make sure you say, God, I'm going to wait till you tell me that the time is right or that you're in it. Okay? So you can pray and tell God what you want. You can pray and tell God what you want to do. That, there's nothing wrong with that. But you need to listen to, he says, yes, come. Yes, go. Yes, do that before you go out and try to do something like that. Now, that brings me to the next thing that I just want to talk a little bit about today. Because for Peter, for a while he walked on the water. And then he didn't. And the question is, what happened? And it brings me to this third thing that I want us just to consider for a few moments today. And that is that doubt and fear are two of our greatest obstacles to experiencing God's power and blessing and the ability to do the impossible. So just think about this. So here's Peter. Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come. Come. Yes, come. So he gets out of the boat and he goes, right? And he's doing great until what? Until he took his eyes off of Jesus. He took his eyes off of Jesus. And what's interesting to me, the Bible tells us he became terrified with the waves. Now, here's what's so interesting to me about what happens next. It's what Jesus said to him. He didn't look at Peter and say, Peter, you're such a failure. I cannot believe this. He didn't say that. Did you notice he didn't even call him out for his fear? It wasn't about that. He didn't say, oh, Peter, you should not have been afraid there. It was going to be okay. He didn't say that. What did he say? He said, Peter, you have, little, you have little faith. You have little faith. Why did you doubt me? Don't miss the significance of this. You see, here was what Jesus was getting at. Peter, as long as you had your eyes on me, you were thinking about all my power. You were thinking about all my strength. You were thinking about the fact that I had just been doing this miracle. And because I could do it, and because I told you to come, you knew, you had confidence that you could do this too. But it's when you got your eyes off of me and what I could do for you, and what I had asked you to do, and you started looking around at the ways, that's when you lost your perspective. Peter's problem was where his focus was. He focused initially on Jesus, and he had a lot of confidence. But when he looked away from Jesus, that's when the doubts came in. Why did they come in? Because he realized men don't walk on water. And he looked around, and he saw the waves. Now, you know what strikes me about this story? Sometimes I think we have the idea that, well, he got out of the water, he's out of the boat, he was walking on the water, and all of a sudden the waves came up. No, no, they were already up. But evidently, when Peter jumped out of the boat, he didn't think about how, blow, how much the wind was blowing and how big the waves were. All he had was his eyes on Jesus. But when he got his eyes off of Jesus, that's when he lost confidence. That's when he lost faith. That's when he lost heart. That's when the doubts crept in. And if Peter is susceptible to this, so will you and I be. When you're going through the impossible situations of life, whether it's something that the Lord has led you to do or you just find yourself in impossible circumstances, the thing that you got to guard against is that you don't let doubt begin to creep in, that you don't start fixating yourself on the circumstances that are around you. Instead, you need to get your eyes on Jesus. And remember, there is nothing that he can't do, nothing that he is that powerful in your life. So make sure that you don't lose your perspective along the way. Keep your eyes focused on Jesus and don't allow the doubt to enter into your life. Now, as I said, it is so easy in this story to just say, well, he shouldn't have had doubt. I mean, Jesus was there. My word, if I had Jesus in front of me, I wouldn't have been so doubt. Yes, we probably would have been. 
And instead of focusing, though, on what Peter lost or, you know, that he started to sink, let's just think about the fact of what he accomplished, what he experienced. And, and this brings me to this fourth thing that I want to talk about for a minute. And that is that attempting the impossible results in many blessings and benefits. I mean, for Peter, he got to be the guy that walked on the water. Nobody before, nobody since. Amazing, amazing miracle. And, you know, you have to wonder, you know, what were the guys thinking that were watching all of this go on? I, I don't think they were all going, Peter, you're such an idiot. You should have kept your eyes on Jesus. No, they're all fixated on, Peter, I can't believe it. You walked on the water. Probably some of them were thinking, I don't know why we didn't jump out. If you could do it, why couldn't we do it? Because they kind of had that competitive nature about themselves. But, but here's my point. There was something amazing that happened in Peter's life because of what he did here. And it actually helped solidify and, and prepare him in some amazing ways for the things that God would ask him to do down the road. Anytime you and I, listen, this is the point. Anytime you and I are willing to get out of the boat, it comes with blessings and benefits. Oh, it comes with some risk. But it also comes with blessings and benefits. It comes with the blessing and benefit of being able to see God intervene and work in your life in just an amazing and incredible way. Who doesn't want that? Who doesn't want that? And let me tell you some other ways that we receive blessing and benefit when we get out of the boat and we trust Jesus and keep our eyes on him. One of the things that happen is that you'll experience a more intimate relationship with Jesus. You know... One of the things when you study the Bible that's pretty clear is that Jesus wants to be your Lord. He wants to be the leader of your life. And we must never forget that. He, he is in a rightful position when we make him the Lord or the king of our life, whatever phraseology you want to use. But he needs to be the leader of our life. But he also wants to be your friend. He wants for you and me to be able to have an intimacy about our relationship with him. And here's what I would have bet for a lot of you today that are followers of Jesus. You can look back at times in your life when you can say, I felt really close to Jesus. And for many of you, it was probably right after you became a Christian. And you were growing like crazy and, and you were excited about your faith and things were going well. And, and, and as time has gone on, some of that has waned a little bit. My guess is that probably some of you in this room and watching the line today, you'd say, you know, once I felt really close to the Lord, but right now it's just not like it used to be. And I, I feel kind of like I've, I've drifted from. Now I want you to hang in here with me. Could it be that the reason that you feel adrift and no longer so close to Jesus is because you're living your life as though you don't need Jesus? That along the way, you come to a place where you've said, you know what, I got life pretty good. I can do this. I can do that. And you're only doing what you can have control over in your life. And you pray every now and then when something comes up that you really need a little help for. But the truth is you're living your life like you don't even really need Jesus. And I want you to know, if you're living your life like you don't really need Jesus, the intimacy that you once had will wane away. It's what happens. Just think about something with me. And your human relationships. Who were some of your closest friends? I will bet the people that you have some of the closest friendships with are the people that walk with you through difficult times. Or that you felt like, hey, you know what, let's go do something crazy together. And you went out and did it together, and because you needed each other and depended on one another, that you bonded with each other, and you felt close to each other, and you developed that relationship because you connected in a way through this experience, whatever was a shared experience of need. Same thing happens between us and Jesus. Whenever you get out of the boat and whenever you do things that are beyond you and you need Jesus and only Jesus could pull it off because you can't in your humans ever do that, I will tell you, you will find yourself becoming more intimate with Jesus. That's a blessing. That's a benefit of this. Let me tell you a second one. And that is that you will grow in your faith and trust in God. 
You know, I think that a lot of people have this wrong idea about how you grow in your faith. A lot of people pray that they have more faith. And I want you to, there's nothing wrong with you praying that you'll have more faith. There's nothing more praying, Lord, help me to trust you more. But I want to tell you that is not how you trust God more and it is not how you grow your faith. It just isn't. You can pray to your blue in the faith, but it, it, it is not probably going to make a big difference. But I'll tell you what will grow your faith. It is to do things that are outside of your abilities. It is to get out of the boat. It is to listen to the nudges of the Holy Spirit and of Jesus in your life when he says, go share your faith with someone or go adopt a child or go to college or go change jobs because this one here, you're stuck in it. Or, you know, go serve in a ministry or give more money to the church because you need to learn to trust me more or whatever the case might be. You just need to think it is when you are nudged to do something that in your mind you don't believe you can do, and then you are actually able to do it with God's help that all of a sudden you look back and say, you know what? He was faithful then and he'll probably be faithful the next time too. I bet every one of you in this room today and everyone watching online, if you were brutally honest, you can look back at times in your life when something felt impossible to you and God was faithful to you. You got through it. And not only sometimes did you get through it, but you excelled in the midst of it. And you were able to experience something you say, I could have never done that without God's help. That was only a God thing. When you look back on that, doesn't it give you some confidence for what you face today? You want to grow in your faith? Get out of the boat. Do something that only God can help you to do. Now, listen, don't just tell God what you're going to do. Listen to his nudge. And when he tells you, yes, come, then go. And you will grow stronger in your faith and your trust in God will increase along the way. And, and let me just tell you one more benefit. And then we'll kind of pull this to a close here. When you get out of the boat and when you do the things that the Lord is leading you to do, it'll help to restore a sense of purpose and excitement in your life. Some of you today, no doubt, you feel stuck and stagnant. And uh, I, I would bet that some of you, you've been a Christian a long time. And you can't quite figure it out. You can't quite figure it out. Like you remember those early days when you were so excited and you read the Bible and you wanted to serve and you wanted to do all things. And you, you'd like to long for those days, but you're not even quite sure. You know, what is wrong? You can't quite put your finger on it. Could I suggest to you that it's because you're playing it too safe? Let's just be honest about it. Those of us who are growing older, the older you get, the less you're willing to try new things. The more you play it safe. Why? Because you have more to lose. I mean, when you were young, you didn't have much to lose. But now you have your house, your resources, your job, your seniority, uh, all that stuff. And so when something comes up that, you know, the Lord is nudging you to do something, it's like, I, I can't do that. It's too much to lose. And what you haven't yet connected is the reason you feel the way you do where there's not much excitement and where there's not a lot of purpose anymore in your life is because you're unwilling to try something. You're unwilling to trust God more. You're unwilling to get out of the boat when you get out of the boat, purpose becomes a part of your life. When you get out of the boat, it rejuvenates you. There's some excitement to it. New things that are a part of that. My point in all of this is this. Don't just focus on what might happen. If Peter had done that, he would have never gotten out of the boat and he would have missed out. But because he was willing... He walked on water. He experienced things, benefits and blessings in his life from that moment forward that he would have never been able to experience. And the same will be true of you. We've got to be willing to get out of the boat. Now, some of you, no doubt, are saying this, or thinking it at least. But Mike, 
what if I fail? What if I fail? So let's just end by talking about that today. And here's what I would submit to you. That attempting the impossible and failing is better than doing nothing. Now, I want to give a little caveat to this, okay? And that is that that statement is only true if God is calling you to do something, okay? If you're, if you're on your own and you just ask God to bless something crazy that you want to do, uh, you know, failure, then that's a whole different kind of thing. But when God is in it and you've prayed and you believe that he's led you, and you're walking through an impossible storm right now and you're sensing God's promises in your life, I want you to know that if you're willing to attempt the impossible, that even if you fail, it's going to be all right. I want, you to, remind, I want to remind you about something we had read earlier. Don't, don't lose sight of this. So Peter's walking on the water and he loses his focus. So easy to do, right? Starts looking at the waves. And what's he do? He cries out to Jesus, save me, Lord. And what did Jesus do? He didn't lecture him at the moment and say, oh, come on, Peter, you know better than this. He didn't say to Peter, Peter, just go ahead and sink. Maybe you'll learn it through life's hard lesson. He didn't do any of those things. What did he do? Remember, it says he immediately reached out and grabbed him. And brought him back up. That's what he did. And you know what? That's exactly what Jesus does for us. Failure is not the end for us. If you're following Jesus' leading. If you're responding to his nudge. He knows. He knows that you're going to probably mess up. Because he knows us. We're human beings along the way. And he doesn't strive to beat us up in those situations. He strives to reach out and grab us and bring us back to the surface. All to be sure, we might have to learn from our lessons. And there might be some things we should have and could have done differently. All of that is true. All of that was true for Peter. But here's what Peter didn't do. He didn't sit around feeling like a failure, feeling like he was dejected, afraid to do anything new ever again. He didn't do that. He learned from it, he picked up his big boy pants, and he moved on with his life. And because of it, one day Jesus said to him, Peter, upon this rock, you, I will build my church. And Jesus did exactly that. And that's what he wants to do for you. I wonder today... If you were just brutally honest, you would say, you know what? I've been playing it way safe. I've been living in fear, focused on my circumstances. And I wonder today if God might be saying to you, get out of the boat. I'm telling you, get out of the boat. And if you sense God leading you to do that, if you sense the nudging of the Holy Spirit to go in a direction and you're sure that it's him, then go get out of the boat. Follow his leading. Do what he wants. Get your eyes on him. And even if you mess up along the way, he's going to reach out and grab you and help you. But get out of the boat. Get out of the boat. That's where the intimacy with Jesus is. That's where your faith grows. That's where renewed purpose and a sense of excitement is found. Get out of the boat. Now, for some of you, my guess is, here's what's happened. You're thinking, I haven't heard the Lord nudge me to do anything for a long time. And I want to tell you if that's true for you, here's my bet. It's because for a long time you've kept saying no, 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 no. I want to be in control. I want to do what I want. And I just want you to consider this. This very day, could it be that what the Lord is spurring you to do, your takeaway from this message is that I'm going to start praying again. Lord, I'm open to whatever you want me to do. Will you lead me? Will you nudge me? 
Will you give me direction? I'm willing to get out of the boat. Just tell me what you want me to do. If that's you, I challenge you to start praying that way. And if you will, there's going to be those moments where it's going to be, yes, come, come. This is what it is for you. And lastly, my guess is that some of you today are looking at your life and you're thinking, Mike, I've been stung by failure. I tried. I blew it. I didn't keep my eyes where it needed to or it didn't turn out like I wanted. And I know Jesus was there, but I will tell you something. It it stung a lot, and I've been a little fearful to try again. I hear you. I've been there. I get it. But do you really want to live your life like that, the rest of it? Is that really what you want your relationship with Jesus to be? I would remind you, no matter how bad it's been, no matter how hard it's been, you, you can. I feel confident in this. You can look back and say, I, I got through it, and I'm getting through it because the Lord reached out and grabbed a hold of me. Don't miss out on the opportunity to walk on the water. That'll look different for you. It probably won't be the water. It'll be sharing your faith, adopting a child, doing something that's beyond you. I don't know what it'll be. But don't let the fear of failure from the past paralyze you from getting out of the boat. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, a lot of us in this room can relate to Peter especially letting our focus get on the waves and on the wind instead of you. Forgive us for that. Lord, I pray for me and all of us. Help us to be more open to the leading, the nudges, the spurring of your spirit in our life. And when those times come, help us to be willing to get out of the boat to go and to do what is impossible for us to do, but to go believing and knowing that when you were involved, nothing is impossible. Lord, for those that are dealing with the sting of failure, I pray you'd heal them up, remind them of your faithfulness, and give them the courage to go it again. And to know that the blessings, the benefits that come from being willing to follow you wherever you lead is so much better than living in the past and what happened in the past. So Lord, help us this week to believe with all of our heart nothing is impossible with you. You are a God of great things. And allow that to spur us this week to listen a little harder and then to act on what you've told us and led us to do. We pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Let's stand together. Let's sing this song as an encouragement and a reminder to us today as we end today of God's great faithfulness to us. have 
done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh, Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh, God, you have done great things. Yes, you do, Lord. You've been faithful. You've been faithful through every storm. You'll be faithful forevermore. Cause you have done great things. And I know. And I know you will do it again. For your promises, yes and amen. You will do great things. God, you do great things. above it all. Hallelujah. And hallelujah, God. Above it all. Hallelujah, God. Unshakable. Hallelujah. You have done great things. Yes, you have, God. open to the nudges of the God who does, who does great things. And when he says, get out of the boat, then go get out of the boat. You can't go wrong, okay? Don't let your doubts, don't let your fear and your lack of faith get in the way of that. It's been so good to have you worship with us today. If you'd like someone to pray with you as we end, we have some folks that are up here at the front. They would be happy to pray with you about any concern that you might have, anything that you'd like someone to pray with you about. If you'd like to talk to someone about how to begin a personal relationship with Jesus, you feel free to come up there also. Uh, more than happy. They would love that opportunity to talk with you more about what a personal relationship with Jesus would look like. God bless you, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us today. We look forward to seeing you next Sunday. Have a great week.